Hi everyone and welcome back to our understanding the PCG system in Unreal Engine 5. Previously we've gone through the basics of how PCG works with the use of sampling data from sources like a spline uh, but this time I want to go through a different type of sampling this time coming from a mesh so there may be occasions where you want to spawn meshes on top of other meshes and this would be an easy way of accomplishing that. Let's go through a few tips and tricks on how to actually accomplish this and we can start making something a bit more interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table generator which is going to generate a table and then put stuff on that table for us. So what I want to do here is I want to create a new blueprint class and we'll call this one BP table. And in my table, I'm going to have a static mesh and we're going to have the PCG graph. And so our aim is to make it so the PCG graph will look at this static mesh component and decide what it should be doing. So let's first of all set up a static mesh here. So I'm going to put in table and we'll just do a dining table like that. Okay. Now to create the PCG graph. So I'm going to go PCG, PCG table and open this up. Okay, so remember what I said in the previous episodes where you want to sample data from somewhere. Last time we done uh, get spline data. Obviously now we're not doing splines, we're doing mesh data. Now I can, can't can just do get mesh data. I'm going to get dynamic mesh, but we're not doing that. That's for like geometry scripting. But instead what I want to be doing here is I want to think about where I'm getting that sampled from. And I'm getting it actually from the actor. So to get the actor, I need to get the actor property of the actor. So I'm going to do get actor property. And we used this last time to access a variable on our actor. But one thing to keep in mind is that components also sort of count as variables. So all you have to do is select the tick box, select component. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to choose a component class when I look for. In this case, it's going to be a static mesh component. And the property name is going to be the name of the static mesh component. And in our table, it is called static mesh. So I'm just going to type in property name here, static mesh. So this is now going to output the attribute of this static mesh in the static mesh component. Okay, so we've got that property from the static mesh. And that will come across in, sorry, that, I should make it clear that property name refers to this static mesh property here. Okay, so if I wanted to get like a parent socket, I could just type in parent socket and it return that as well. But we just want to get a static mesh. That's going to get the mesh there. I now want to sample that mesh with a mesh sample. Now the mesh sample, as you can see, has no inputs by by default. In order for us to give it a mesh rather than setting one over here we just turn on extract mesh from input I turn it on and plug in our out into the mesh sampler now if i hit d to debug this and put this into my scene it's there but notice how the points aren't spawning on here at all but if i were to go back to the pcg graph i should also Did I not set it? I did not set the PCG graph there. That's, that would help, wouldn't it? Let's do a PCG table. There we go. So there won't be any dots spawning on the table just yet because what it's doing is spawning the dots over here instead. And these dots are sampling that table. Okay. And the problem we have at the moment is the samples are local to their mesh. Okay. But the mesh is obviously way over here so i need to combine the location data of my actor over there to the location data of these points and the way you do that is with the copy points tool so let's go back to our pcg and we go copy points and the target for this is going to be the actor's location itself so let's do the actor data and then i want to copy the points across to my target actor there now if i debug this and we'll do inspect as well you can see all the points are now popping up over here save that 
And we can see now all the points now decorated onto the actual table itself, which is great. That's what we want. Now, in this case, we need to now filter out what points we actually want. Now, at the moment, the mesh sampler is sampling from the mesh triangles. Now, at the moment, mesh triangles are pretty spaced apart because it's quite a basic shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to voxelize it. So when voxelizing, it means it's going to just scatter a load of these points all over it. And the voxel size we're going to set to here, we're going to do like five for now. And we should see all these points appearing all around our table. Okay. And we can always do more than that. We can change the voxel of that. Let's change that to maybe 20. Okay, that's not looking too bad. In fact, I do want to show something in particular. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We'll go to like 10. There we go. So now you can get all these points all scattered around your table. Now the problem we have at the moment is I don't want it to spawn anything underneath the table or the legs or anything like that. So I need to now filter out what points I actually want. And that's the second process of PCG. PCG comes in a couple of processes. First step is you want to generate the points. Then you want to filter out the points and then spawn the meshes that you want to spawn in. So let's now work on filtering these points out. First of all, I only want the ones that are facing upwards. I don't want any on the table, pointing to the side at all, like legs or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is use a normal to filter that. So from our points here, we can do normal to density. Now density is an interesting little uh, figure because basically density is the color of each of these points. So see how they're white? That means they've got value of one, density of one. And this value can be modified. In this case, the node normal to density means it's going to transfer what the normal data is over to the density value. And in this case, it's going to dot product it comparing it to the normal of 0, 0, 001. So basically, anything up is going to be compared to it. So if I were to debug and test this one out and turn that one off, and for some reason it does this sometimes, it loses the just turn that off for a second and take back on there you go and we can see some are now black and that black is referring to the density of it being nothing because it is facing the wrong way so what i need to do is i will now filter those by density so i take this out i'm going to do filter and you'll see their density filter and the lower bound here is what is going to be the maximum a uh, minimum allowed so i'm going to do 0.95 And we will see on there, I mean, every time it does this, it's really annoying. Just, again, turn it off, let it filter. Turn it off, and then turn it back on again. There you go. Um, it will get rid of all the ones that are on the legs, under the table, because these are the ones that are now going to be counted. Okay, so that's what that filter is doing. Now, alongside that, we may want to also keep them away from the edges of the table too. Now, this depends heavily on what kind of shape you want to do your, uh, your table in. But what I recommend you do is we are taking the bounds of our mesh and we're going to change them. Okay, We're going to modify the bounds of it. So we've got the bounds from the get actor data. We get single data from this, a single point. If I were to just uh, preview what that looks like, it's this big white box you see here. Now, if I were to make that box a bit taller, a bit thinner, I want to do an intersection to work out which ones overlap each other. So we're going to modify the bounds. And I'll bring it in. So I'm going to do 0.8 by 0.8. 8 by 0.8. And if I go preview that, you can see now it's now tucked in a little bit. And I'll probably go a little bit more actually. I'll just go 0.6, 0.7, 0.6, 0.8. Obviously, these are minimax, so these can be randomized as well. So they're not all exactly the same. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, so we're going to have this sort of setup, but then I want to modify the uh, this box, basically an overlap, and rise it up. So I'm going to take the bounds modifier and transform the points, and increase their offset minimum max in the Z by I don't know, let's do fifty. And now if I debug this instead, you'll see it's now risen up. So what I want to do now is I want to get the intersection between this point and all our other little points. 
So we've got these two. I'm going to do an intersection and put those two into one. And now if I preview our points here, you can see here it's added, it's cut off the ones that overlap that point. Okay. And I can filter those out by filtering density again. And if I want to make it even clearer, I can just do density filter after the fact. And it will cut those out there. There we go. So now we can sample things quite clearly on our meshes. But what about spawning something on it? Okay, so here we are sampling the top of the table. Now let's use those points to spawn objects into them. Now I'm going to spawn in some cups and things. Okay, so what we're going to ultimately end up doing is having a static mesh spawner and we're going to set a mesh entry on it for the cup. So let's just choose a cup. And one thing you want to be careful of when you're doing these meshes is you want to make sure the pivot point for the mesh is at the base of the cup or the contact point where it's going to contact and touch the uh, other surfaces. If it isn't touching the surface, go into modeling mode and just edit the pivot so it is doing so. So I'm going to set the cup there. And if I just leave it like that, turn off our debugs here. So these cups obviously overlapping too much. We need to prune them out. So there is a self prune node. We can put that in before we spawn the meshes in. Self prune. And what this does, it uses the bounds uh, of our points and says, if you're overlapping, just remove one of you from the list. Now, at the moment, our bounds are quite small, so therefore they're not overlapping at all. So we need to edit that so that they are overlapping. So before we do self pruning, we're going to do bounds modifier. Remove that previous line, put in a new one. And the bounds modifier, I'm just going to increase the scale of these bounds up. So let's do four by four by four, four by four, four. Save that. And now you can see we get a lot better spacing apart between them. And we could arguably go a bit further. We could increase the bounds a little bit more. Let's go to uh, five by five by five. And if you want, you can randomize this because this is a min and max value, but not always going to be the same. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, you probably don't want that many cups on there. Yeah, you probably won't be randomized which ones you want to get. So what we're going to do is we are going to go at the end here and do select points. And this will let you select a ratio of the points available. So by default, it's set to 0.1, so 10%. Let's change it to 0.5, so we get 50% of the points available to us. And there we have it. We've got our table spawning objects on top of it. If I want to add other meshes to it, I can do it. Just go to our static mesh spawner and add more meshes to it. Now, the benefit of making this uh, mesh selection work dynamically through the actor means I can use the same logic to generate other objects in my environment using the same thing. So let's say this, we want cups to be spawned on a different type of table. I can go down here and we'll pop this other table on. And as you can see, it generates them. It will change according to the shape of the object. And if I go to here, we can really change it up. We go to a dresser and you can see it's now spawning it based upon the dresser. Now, one thing you're going to see is this issue where it may spawn it inside of that object there. Now, the reason why you're seeing that is because the, that bounds uh, collision that we made doesn't, it's gone exceeding it. So demonstrate, if I go over to uh, this transform point here where I'm mo modifying that inclusion bound and preview that. And we'll go to table three, preview table three there. You can see where it's risen a bit too much, right? So I can bring that back down a little bit, obviously a bit too much for this object. Um, we'll just change that to be, uh, let's say 25 by 25. 
Okay. And now if I go in and turn off the debugs, should get a better result. No, it's still spawning them. Figure out why that's doing that. So I'm just going to do turn off this like spawn second and just preview these points here. Okay, so we're getting all of these points. Okay, um, I want it. To, oh, I want it to exclude those points. Not uh, I've messed up. I've done it the wrong way around. Right, <laughs> we want to transform the points up further. Let's do sixty by sixty. And do DA. There we go. Okay. So you can use this object now for all different types of things. So it doesn't have to be like that. And it will generate around our environment as we so wish. So it's a really cool way to really dynamically get what mesh you want to spawn things on. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that look at how to sample mesh data, especially dynamically from the mesh. Now, there are other ways of getting mesh data. We'll probably cover those at some point as well. But what I want to start showing you in the next video is starting to show how you can combine these things together to get more things like subgraphs where you can combine PCGs together and get interesting uh, compounded results. So for that next episode, you can watch it right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. If you like what we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.